I'm Diane Buckner, and this is Fortune Hunters, the show where you hear about the hottest trends and try to figure out who's about to make big money off them. On this episode, renovation fever. I saw the success of other companies like 1-800-GOT-JUNK and some of these junk guys and realized how expensive they were. A family man says forget dumpsters and bets it all on his giant garbage bag. Unless this gets solved soon, we've got some huge problems. <laughs> and... I'm going to create some job in this country. The man behind the biggest home improvement chain in the country, Rona. <laughs> I think he's broken. <laughs> It might have something to do with the evolution of the species. First, we kept our caves tidy, then we kept up with the Joneses. Now, home improvement has become a kind of obsession with TV shows and magazines and contractors galore. But there are also some significant financial factors to explain why people are spending wheelbarrows of money to make their living space more functional and fabulous, and why enterprising Canadians think this is a good trend to tap into to make money. Check out our trend tracker. Since 1999, when interest rates fell and real estate started to climb, people have been upgrading and improving as much as they can afford. A house is the biggest investment most people make. The better it looks, the more it's worth. We scoured the country looking for reno-related entrepreneurs. In Vancouver, we found Peter McGee and Alistair Moore with their Greenworks Building Supply. They offer one-stop shopping for eco-friendly products for home improvement. In Calgary, Jamie Hutton has founded Ultimate Garage Inc. to sell a full range of organizational design concepts for your garage. And in Belleville, we found the fortune hunter with the boldest approach to building his company. We're zeroing in on Randy Ewens and the story of Rhino Bag. And we have two experts with us here today to help us analyze the Reno trend and the prospects of our fortune hunter. Mike Holmes is a celebrity contractor, the host of Homes on Homes on HGTV, and still in business for himself as a bona fide renovator. Welcome, Mike. How are you doing, Diane? Good to see you. And Bupesh Shah is a retail and hardware expert. He spent seven years at Canadian Tire, including time as a buyer. He knows his stuff. Hello, Bupesh. Hello. Thank you, Diane. All right. Now, buckle in for the story of Randy Ewens and Rhino Bag, our Belleville fortune hunter Randy thinks Rhino Bag will bag him a lot of money. So will Randy rake it in? Let's watch and then get the word from our experts. Fourteen minutes now after ten o'clock. Happy to have Randy Ewens in. Randy is well known in this area as just being a, a big tall guy. Ripping apart your house? Randy Ewens wants your junk. It was an idea that we had, I've been working on for a long time and I saw the success of other companies like 1-800-GOT-JUNK and some of these junk guys and realized how expensive they were. His creation, the Rhino Bag. It costs about 40 bucks at the hardware store. You fill it with renovation debris or any other garbage you don't want and for around $150, Randy's guys take it away. We can help people with that small load. They don't necessarily need a big 40-yard bin out in front of their house. Randy got his rhino bag brainwave while playing pro hockey in Europe. Arenas and stadiums there use a similar service. Then when he came home... I had a, a large uh, hockey bag that I filled full of junk in Belleville. And uh, I took it to the curb, and, and the uh, local municipality wouldn't take it away. So I knew I had an idea. It was a big idea. In just two years, Randy's managed to get his rhino bags into hardware chains across the country. I want rhino bag to be a household name, so that every time everyone gets rid of junk, they say, I want to rhino bag it. Now he's raising the stakes, making moves to launch into the U.S. I have tons of money invested, my own, my family, my friends. I'm counting on this to go really big. But going big costs big money. Um, you can follow up with the bank, find out what our options are. Launching the company has already cost a lot. Now, Randy needs more. We also have to expand our advertising to increase our, our, our brand recognition. We're going to have to do some serious advertising in the fall. There's no secret stash of cash at home. Daddy's paychecks go into the company. Mom Natasha is feeding the family thanks to her hospital job. Randy had an idea. He wanted to go ahead with it. 
and um, I was absolutely in favor of him going ahead because life is so short and it's important that he tries something that he really wanted to do. To live his dream, Randy needs money now. Hello, dragons. Enter the dragons. Randy made the cut as a contestant on CBC's hit reality show, Dragon's Den. Do you want to be the CEO? Are you clear on your numbers? Randy wanted $500,000 of investment, but very few pitchers get a deal on the show. I think there's a gr something here. I do too. A rare feat. All five dragons were interested, but wanted 50% of the company. I think you have a deal. That deal was made in May of 07. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. But now it's August, and no dragon dollars have shown up yet. Just got an email from uh, Dragon's Den lawyer. Wants me to call him. Seems the deal is stuck in the Dragon's lawyer's office. Randy's waiting, not very patiently. When you pick the bag up, you want to square as you possibly can, right? He's keeping busy, though, directing his own commercial. It wouldn't be a rhino bag ad unless we had a kitchen sink in it, so everyone we've ever done. So I guess I need to know how fast you're planning on moving. And he's trying to strike a marketing deal with rent a -Sun. It's so obvious that there's a synergy between what rent a -Sun does and what rhino bag does. We're canvassing, we're hitting the roads, and we're going to be knocking on doors. Sounds good. Okay. Great. Thanks. Take care. Then, in the midst of a service call to Home Depot, Bottom line of the whole business thing is we've got to really get this thing going. It's the Dragon's lawyer on the phone. We're coming up to September 1st and you know I have to start marketing and selling this thing and we've been completely handcuffed from a business standpoint unable to do anything so unless this gets solved soon we've got some huge problems on, on the way so I'm hoping that we can resolve this quickly so we can get back to, to doing some business here. Is it a possibility that we look at doing just a small investment now for a smaller percentage? Randy's not the only one sweating the Dragon deal. His biggest investor, Mark Hanley, is just as anxious. Within the next two weeks, I have to book some you know, ads, TV, radio, whatever. Mark owns a few Tim Hortons outlets in Belleville. He thinks Team Rhino can't keep waiting around. I think we should just start now grooming our other options. One strategy, Randy owes money to his manufacturer, Lily Yi. It's all about having enough cash flow to, to, to advertise right now. But she's also a shareholder. Maybe she'll give him more time to pay. The That's money's right. locked up, right? That's right. Lily's critical to our operation because as a shareholder, she gives us better terms on our, our debt to her. So it gives us longer time to pay, which in turn gives a better cash flow. But to get the big bucks he needs to make Rhino Bag a household name, Randy may need to lure other investors, like big-time financiers on Bay Street. <laughs> the next time we caught up with Randy was November. He was in Toronto. His Dragon's Den episode had been broadcast, and he decided to dump the dragons. Well, after the, the television show aired, um, we had so many leads of people that were interested in investing in the company, which gave us, uh, we didn't have to give as much of the company up in these deals. He did find faster funding from a big investment firm. We also need some money to carry us through as we advance into the U.S. market, so right now it's critical for us to grow the business to have that money come in quickly. His next move, rolling Rhino into the States. What's that saying? One person's trash is another's treasure. That could be true for Randy Ewens. Things are looking good for Randy, or are they? Do our experts agree that his business is gold, not garbage? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Coming up later in the show. Arona store is much more than a retail destination. Up close and personal with Robert Dutton, the business builder behind Rona. My father was so proud.